to me, the most interesting item in the wrestling world this week that I saw were the reports that WWE fired one of their corporate executives, not because of directly anything that executive did or said or tweeted or anything like that, but because of what his wife tweeted. Think about that. Not because necessarily of directly anything he did other than association with a racist. He got fired because of something somebody else did. Now to me, that is the height of fucked up. And the height of stupidity. Now think about this for a second. Imagine being somebody that's so batshit that they devote themselves entirely to right-wing bullshit or left-wing bullshit. And let's face it, right-wing bullshit on social media and the internet is far more attention-grabbing and far more profitable, ultimately, than the left-wing variety. Because it's so often the case, the left-wing can't get anything freaking right. But imagine being so bad, so consistently, and so idiotic, that for what you tweet on Twitter, what you post on social media, and the Islamophobia and the racism that you put out there, you have now cost your spouse their career, or at least in this case, their job. And then not just any job. We're talking about an executive with WWE. So you were talking about when you start getting into executive level, you were talking good six figures, like mid to potentially high six figures, possibly with stock and different things, up to seven figures. How incredibly stupid do you have to be to put that at risk because you want to tweet crap about Islam? Like, think about the height of stupidity that it is. Regardless of what you think of the religion or people of the world, whatever. Imagine being so obsessed and so unbalanced as to potentially put everything at risk because you want to fucking tweet crazy 24-7-365. That's just astounding to me. And what is more than mind-blowing is clearly the husband who was the WWE executive that, according to the WWE, is no longer with the company now, even though reportedly the WWE knew about this Amy Mech bitch way back when they hired the husband. Imagine associating yourself with somebody like that. Furthermore, associating yourself with somebody like that and being unable to check the bitch in this case and being unable to get them to control them fucking selves and saying, ding dong, dumb bitch, you're about to cost us a shit ton of money. For what? So that way eventually you can maybe be brought on Fox News a few fucking times. What the hell is wrong with you? Imagine being that husband and losing a highly paid gig as an executive for an international entertainment conglomerate, not because you were racist in and of yourself in terms of what you demonstrated in public, not because of anything you said or did in terms of cooking the books financially or incompetence of your job or anything like that that is directly actually related to you. You are solely fired because of something somebody else tweeted consistently, and in this case, your wife. You would have to think at some point in time, the puss can't possibly be that good. It cannot be. Why in the hell would you be with somebody who clearly does not care about you, who clearly does not respect you, and clearly does not give a shit about the damage they potentially cause for the selfish crap that they put out there? I think that's a very important question. And from the company optics standpoint of it, Imagine having it get out because of that Huffington Post article about this notable Twitter troll called Amy Mech, Amy Mecklenburg, whatever the hell her name is. Having that get out there 
that her husband works for your company at a time where your husband is trying to negotiate big time contracts with Arabic Muslim countries such as Saudi Arabia and others. You've seen the reports talking about what that Saudi Arabia deal was worth to the WWE over the course of 10 years. It's reportedly 200 plus damn million dollars. So you can't be surprised when the WWE says, whoa, 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 we don't want any part of that crap, whether they agree with it or not. Different story. They're trying to get into the India market. They're trying to get into the Middle Eastern market. They're trying to expand their global brand and presence as much as possible. The last thing you need is to be associated with that crap. And this husband can't figure out a way to hack the wife's Twitter, shut it down, tell her, hey, honey, bitch, you stupid cunt, stop tweeting. You're screwing everything up. No wonder the WWE didn't want any part of it. No wonder the WWE fired him. Maybe, we don't know. They told him before, you get that shit in check or you're gone. And it didn't get in check, so it's gone. But this is ridiculous. As the guy is negotiating things with Arabic countries, you've got his wife tweeting the vomit that she does. It is completely and totally understandable why the WWE, we say, nah, we good. We just like to be racist against black wrestlers and sometimes Asian wrestlers in WWE. We're not trying to stir up that shit storm of a hornet's nest of one plus billion people that belong to this particular religion. Not going there. Can you blame them? I think to me, the thing that is interesting about all of this, though, is that we have now crossed over, as we're talking about anthem protest and crap Rosanna said, and the counter to that being crap Bill Morris said, and so on and so forth. Where is that line drawn in the sand when it comes to the First Amendment? Where do we have the right to free speech and where do we don't? And what is so ridiculous about all of this is that somebody lost a high paying executive job within WWE because of something somebody else wrote, because of something somebody else said. Now to me, fundamentally, the purpose of the First Amendment is to make sure that the government doesn't create an establishment that suppresses freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of and or from religion. And from a governmental standpoint, that means that we are not there just to protect the popular speech. It is specifically designed to protect the unpopular speech, to give that a voice, to give that a place. It is like when I see Antifa and Black Lives Matter protest and I see the Nazis and the skinheads and the white supremacist protest in March. If they are abiding by the rules set forth and they're getting the proper clearances to do so and they're doing it peacefully, I do not want to, to break down as a war in the comment section about who's peaceful or who not. The point of the matter is we should equally protect the rights of those people to say those things because that is allegedly supposed to be a fundamental tenet of our constitution and as forth a result, this freaking country. Now you can say that doesn't mean that you just get to say whatever you want and there aren't potential consequences in the business world. And yes, that is ultimately true. But it is really scary to think about outside of what this heifer was saying and what she was tweeting and the hate that she's been spewing for a long, long time. It comes down to a point where it starts to get really scary when you talk about the internet and you talk about social media to where now you can lose your job because of the crap that people associated with you, related to you, married to you, say or tweet. That's a really, really tough precedent to set. That is a really, really scary place to be. Imagine you in your job thinking everything is going fine and you've done well for yourself. And then all of a sudden, when your family member says something hateful on Twitter and it goes viral and all of a sudden it comes back to your company that you're related to that individual and that individual's been saying it a long time, imagine losing your job because of that. Now you could talk about keeping somebody in check or stopping them from doing it, but ultimately 
as humans, we were given free will. How much can you really stop, check, or suppress somebody doing what they want to do? And if we're going to start getting to the point where we are firing people not because of what they said that might have been racist or something that we disagreed with and creates bad optics for the company, it sets a bad precedent, but we're going to do it because of others that they are associated with do that, then we have crossed over into a place that is really, really scary. I'm frightened for the future of this country. I am frightened for the youth of this country. We don't always have to agree, but when we've gotten to the point that we can get fired because of the bad crap other people do, how could anyone feel safe?